lift your hands and talk to God. Lift your hands and make that confession tonight. Tell him how much you need him. the praise you take the honor thank you thank you you get the glory you get the glory you get the praise you get the praise you take the honor you take the honor I just want to say that you will be glorified this is why we come week after week this is why we are exposed to your presence that by the transforming power of your word your presence and by the ministry of your spirit that our lives will become a reflection of your glory Thank you, Jesus. Can you just be calm everywhere? Just be still for just a minute. Just the strings play. Just be still for a minute. I want you to know that you are under an intense atmosphere of His presence. But it's the effect of his presence that is initiated into your life. And in these few seconds, I want you to just open up your heart tonight. Put away every distraction. And allow the Lord minister to you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh. Just the strings and the cymbals and the people sing it softly. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. Sing it to Him tonight. Father, cause your word to prosper in our lives to the end that we are transformed, that we are changed. Shift us to another level, increase us in the knowledge of you. 
And we vow today that the glory will return to you. Thank you for already for all that you have done in this service up to this point. Thank you for ministering to our hearts. We love you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. And amen. Please say a big amen. amen. God bless you. Be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see every one of us. Welcome to Pneumatech again. And as usual, I know that we are going to have an amazing time and an experience in the presence of God in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've been on a series since um, for two weeks now. This is the third Sunday. Um, we've been discussing on a subject, building godly relationships. Is that true? Is that true? Okay, bring out your Bibles. Let's enter the class mode now. Okay? Bring out your Bibles, your jotters, your pen, or your iPad or tablet. And uh, let's go into the Word in a moment. So we've been discussing on the subject building godly relationships. How many of us have been blessed so far? I hope you are, you are saying the truth. <laughs> it's been a wonderful, wonderful and an interesting subject. I hope or I believe that uh, we'll still come back to teach on this again. I believe that this is just a foundation for many more that God will open us to. As far as this subject is concerned, we discussed the various categories of relationships. And um, from last week, we started talking about two of the most important, I believe, or two of the most common, relationships and marriage. In other words, relationship as in between a man and a girl or a man and a lady, what we popularly will call courtship that stage before they get to say I do from last week and uh, we couldn't finish it I do hope that we'll finish it today so because of time I would not be able to go to do a thorough recap on this but um, two or three important things I would just pick out from last week for the benefit of those of us who are not around to share so that we can be on the same page. Hallelujah. We discussed about the purpose of marriage. Is that is that not true? We said that um, we outlined about three of them. Number one, procreation. Bearing children. You know, God told them in Genesis chapter 1 that they should multiply and replenish the earth. So that's one of the purpose for which a man and a woman must come together in holy matrimony, in marriage. Number two, for the establishment of the kingdom of God in our families. It's very important that every aspect of our existence declares and reveals the dimensions of God's kingdom on the earth. And uh, a very important aspect is marriage. Marriage. You know, in marriage you have a family is born. You have the father, the mother, and the children. And each of these is a dimension of revelation of God. I believe that it is captured within the context of a father to reveal God as father to his creation. The Bible says, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Amen? Yes. The Bible also speaks about the place of the mother. In Deuteronomy chapter 33, the Bible says, As an eagle, 32 rather, As an eagle stirred her nest and carries her young. That's a mother. And um, I believe that every mother has a role of revealing the place of God as mother 
to his creation. A mother is known for protection, for care. And when we begin to exemplify this in our family, the structure of the kingdom of God is being revealed through these different roles. Are we together? Good. So it is very important for us to understand that our marriages, our families are to establish God's kingdom. It's a strategy. And then also we said that one of the purpose is also to illustrate the relationship between Christ and the church. Amen. Which you will now see more between the husband and the wife. That's the reason why we are attacking it from the stage of relationship. Because for some of us who are not married, if you know some of these things, if you um, uh, be begin to practice them, you will have a wonderful relationship and a successful marriage because you will be walking according to the blueprint that is laid out for us in scripture if you are with me say amen so it is to illustrate the relationship between christ and the church the bible says as christ loved the church husbands should love their wives and as the church should submit to christ in all things so the wife is to submit to a husband amen and um, we looked at God's pattern for a healthy relationship and marriage. So we decided to look at it from different angles. Last week, we were only able to treat the spiritual aspect. Amen. Which I know many of us like. So, but the other aspect we will treat today, which some of us don't like. Amen. So that there can be balance. Amen. Uh -huh. How many of you enjoy the playlet by Spirituality? Amen. So I think they've helped a lot. They've preached a part of the message, so we can just continue. So let's look at the intellectual aspect. You can write the intellectual aspect. Remember, this is from God's pattern for a healthy relationship and fruitful marriage. We have looked at the spiritual aspect. We said the prerequisite was that they must, they must be born again, both the man and the woman. Is that true? Is that true? Uh -huh. They must be what? Born again. And then it is advisable that when a young man sees a young lady and he begins to like the lady or vice versa, it is advisable that they start as friends. Amen? Don't just rush at a lady and begin to say, Thus said the Lord. Amen. That's how I know they work these days. Our ladies have now become very wise. Say amen. Ladies, am I saying the truth? They are very wise. If you say, thus said the Lord, they will tell you they can hear God too. Even when they are not hearing God. <laughs> amen. So it is important as a man that you calm down and start by interacting with the young lady. Just like you saw in the playlet. Amen get to know her or get to know him become friends amen share things in common that's how the intimacy between both of you will grow even if he's a miracle husband at least you will spend one month or two months or three months or four months before the marriage no be so so it is good for us to cultivate friendship see it is important that your best friend should be your spouse are you hearing me? You know, there is something that ladies have developed. They call it bestie. <laughs> a moment a young man has entered that picture, bestie should start fading away. Are, we, are you hearing me? Just like Old Testament fades away. Amen. So it is good that, that they share things in common, that they grow together. And uh, we saw a lot around the spiritual aspect. We looked at um, a biblical portrait for a man and a woman. I shared some scriptures with us. Uh, you could go back to listen to the messages and I trust it will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love 
Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Can we sing it one more time? Falling, falling in love, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love, falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing. One more time, sing it together. Say, falling in love. Falling in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Oh, 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 sing it, yeah. Falling in love. With Jesus. Jesus. Falling in love. Falling in love. Say, The best thing I've ever done. Proverbs 24, verse 2 to 3. Is that verse 2? Okay, give me verse 3. I think verse 3 is where we'll begin from. Let's read together. It's projected on the screen. One, two, go. Through wisdom is a house built. Read it again with faith. One, two, go. Some translation says, by common sense. Amen? And Bishop Oedipo said, we walk by common sense, we run by principles, and we fly by instructions. So God is strategic in everything that he has created. There are principles to follow. And that's what we want to look at today. Next verse, verse 4. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with with all precious and pleasant riches. Did he say by prayer? Talk to me now. Did he say by prayer? Some of you that like prayer, you don't want to talk, but did he say by prayer? He said by what? Knowledge. Now, I want to start by balancing something. We, we live in an age of Christianity where there is need for balance. A lot of extremism have entered into the body of Christ in form of doctrines. Doctrines are good. Are you hearing me? Doctrines are good. For some of you who say doctrines are not good. No, doctrines are good. There are actually two types of doctrines. There is the biblical doctrine which we teach from the word of God. Then there is sectarian doctrine. That's the one that may not be too good. Sectarian doctrine is... A set of rules or a set of teachings put together by a church or by a Christian organization to as a form of comporting their members on how to behave or the protocol for which they exist are you hearing me that's not the one that we must teach in the body of Christ that can be for your local church so doctrine biblical doctrine is good so that truth can be established are we together now the problem of doctrine is that when god gives a man a revelation he holds on to it as though that is all the revelation of god as there is so the error is when you stay on one side but you see every doctrine every revelation that is given is meant to be brought together so that we can see the big picture which is christ and grow into becoming his reflection are we together that's the reason why knowledge is important so when we pray in church we must be strategic enough to teach the people of god we must raise intelligent christians are you hearing me and the bible says by knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches so first of all there is a wisdom for a home there is a wisdom for a relationship. The Bible says it is on wisdom that a house is built. Whether it's a relationship or it's already a marriage in place, it's still a house. Isn't it? 
and by understanding it is established it says by knowledge the rooms are filled with riches so god's pattern for a healthy relationship and a fruitful marriage we're looking at the intellectual aspect first of all amongst many things the couple must understand that they must be purpose driven but let me start from the area of relationship there's no need going to a relationship with somebody who does not understand the word purpose ladies are you hearing me don't follow a man that doesn't have a vision don't follow a man that doesn't have a vision but rather has a big television in his house so when you went to his house you saw a big flat screen samsung and when you quantify the monetary value you 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 realize that this one has enough money to take care of me because he has a big tv follow a man that has a vision vision is the picture of the future vision is an understanding of what a man has been called to do and what he has been called to be vision is the cure for identity crisis vision is actually the remedy for competition vision is god's prescribed format for your existence as a human being it is what you sleep and dream about it is what you wake up and think about it is what propels you it is what motivates you through life and i told somebody one time i say it is my belief that every man looks like his vision so if you see a, a fat man with a big stomach where what do you think his, his vision is with all due respect amen you know it doesn't apply always are you hearing me it's so, you dream about it you sleep on it this is the picture that you see of yourself this is the motivation i believe that it is the vision of your purpose that should give you an image of the kind of woman or the kind of man you should settle down with because if i look at your spouse i should be able to know where you are going to him or her it should be but because you chose this person what you are telling me is that if i understand this person's life I can understand where you are headed because you will not choose a partner and notice i'm using the word choose choose you know we are getting confused about the, this thing we call the will of god in marriage and i believe that as much as god reveals god can reveal your spouse to you god does not do that to everybody in christianity your work with god is personalized is customized it's not on general mood at some point so it depends on your relationship with god god can appear to bishop and show him his wife or to brother henry and show him his wife that doesn't mean that i must wait to see a vision like him are you hearing me but one thing you can be sure of is that god will approve of a partner that conforms or a partner that has virtues that conforms to his purpose for your life are we together so both of them must be visionary both of them must be purpose driven amen the man should be able to tell you in one word or in one sentence if you ask him honey where are we going to where are you headed what's your vision about the future what do you think will happen what's your, what, what are you what are you dreaming about he should be able to say it in one sentence because that's his obsession and same thing for the ladies too guys you know we in african society I, well i'm speaking generally because i know there are people following us from different part of the world world but in african society there is this crude mentality which i believe it's not supposed to be allowed in the church that places a woman as a second class citizen so you see men who are not concerned about a purpose driven partner as a woman all they think is just to make money and when i've made the money as far as she's a woman i can marry her and continue young men help yourself oh. 
My spiritual father told me one time, he said, There are three categories of women you can marry. Number one, knife. The type that will kill you. The type that can shout on you. The type that will not give you rest at all. Number two, wife. The one who just knows how to do house chores. Knows how to wash your clothes. And then is good in the other room. You understand what I mean? Uh That's a wife. No, that's why that's why that's why they coin the word housewife. I don't think there's anything like housewife. Are you hearing me? If you are a housewife, you chose to become one. Then number three, there is the the third one is called a life. That there are some women that not only are they good in house chores, not only are they good in cooking. But they are very intelligent, career-driven, purpose-driven, women with wisdom. And these ones are like an extra life. When you look at them, how many of you played video games those days? I know you played. <laughs> when they kill you, kill you, kill you, they will say that you have extra life, isn't it? That there are some women that are like that. A woman that you can turn to and say, Honey, can you borrow me a million naira? I'll pay you back in two weeks. And she'll say, Okay, give me your account number. Or she'll say, Don't worry, I'll transfer it to you before evening. That one is not just a wife, that one is an extra life. Somebody say, Extra life. <laughs> Young men, you want to succeed, marry an extra life. Amen. Yeah. And if you are a woman, you can become one. Thank God for what the humanitarian cycle is doing. GBV, gender based, whatever, gender equality. Gender equality, ba? Okay, let's 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 do the gender equality now. Amen. So both of them must be purpose driven. As a woman beyond just a kitchen. Have a goal for your future. Know where you are headed. It is not without place for a woman to be career driven at all. Amen. And I know that there are some guys who like, they, just, they don't like the woman to do any work. Say, just stay at home and take care of my children. <laughs> that your million, million, multi million business, the day it will fail. We've seen families like that, isn't it? If you have not seen, at least watch Nollywood. Wealthy man, and then his brothers conspire against him and kill him come and share the property and the woman is like that reduced to poverty why because she didn't feel that being a career woman or finding something to do with her life was anything but excuse me both the man and the woman was created by god and god blessed both of them and said let them have dominion as a woman you can enter into that mode of dominion in your career in your business amen you can create a wonderful future for yourself. Look at the, the scripture we read last week about the virtuous woman. How many of you love that description? I know when we're reading it, some of you in your mind were saying that my wife be that. Now, those of you that are not married. Amen. So they must be purpose driven. They must be visionary. Both must be committed to build their minds. Both the man and the woman must be committed to build their minds. Let me tell you something. The future is for the educated. Are you hearing me? The future is for who? The educated. Now don't get me wrong. There's a difference between education and schooling. She? If you don't know, know today. Oh. Schooling is you have degree. But you can't make a, a fluent speech in public. Because you only read for exam. Education is a brilliant mind. So both must be committed to building their minds. As a man, spend time to read books. Spend time to read journals. Spend time to source for information. Some of you are here, you don't even know what's happening. Yesterday I was, te- I was teasing one of, our, one of our brothers. I asked him, who is the richest man in the world now? Okay, let me ask the question. Who is the richest man in the world? Shout the name. Eh? It's not Jeff Bezos. You are not current. It's not Elon Musk. 
Eh? Bernard Arnold. You are not current. So what were you watching throughout the week? Chelsea, Man City, ba? Bernard Arnold. That's how, how current you should be. It is not out of place. Hmm? We are talking about the intellectual aspect now. It is not out of place to watch news, no current affairs, and be current. Today, I had to take a little time to pray for our brothers in the East because I was following the news and I discovered that there was a sit-at-home order, you know, IPOB and all of that. Some of you are here, you don't even know, and you have families there. As a man, be current, be brilliant. So that when you talk, your lady will be proud of you, at least. Are we together? Yeah. So both must be committed to building their minds. Build your mind spiritually. Build your mind intellectually. Read books. As a lady, read. Spend time to read. There are some ladies that as soon as they finish their first degree, that's all. They drop book. You know those things we used to say in school? After your last paper, I say, I will not read even signboard. That's a joke. <laughs> See, I will not read even sign, but for one week. I hope it does not include your Bible. You will not read even your Bible. After one week, you don't read your Bible, and then you, you, you have a nightmare, and you are looking for pastor's number. When a, a knowledge from Scripture can just do the work. So build your minds. Be educated. There is something called a beautiful mind. Have you met people, and when they talk, you just want to be around them? I'm one of them, oh. Say amen. amen. Uh -uh. I'm not boasting. It's the truth. Keep preaching aside. I can hold you down for two hours. Talking sense into your destiny. Leave I, Not talking the Bible. Let's just talk. I can speak to you for two hours. Talking sense. There's too much there. Not the type that will wake up in the morning and is just straight to the kitchen for breakfast. You wake up around 8 o'clock. You are not even bothered that you woke up late. Then you go straight to the kitchen. Hey, waiting day now. Waiting day. Be intelligent. Build your mind. Educate yourself. Study about relationships. Study what's happening around you. Study about businesses. You say, hey, but man of God, I'm not interested in business now. Don't you know you can be a consultant? There are people who are paid for what they call consultancy. That word is a scam. It's just that they are able to provide information that the person who didn't read cannot provide. Read. Some of you are already old. You are ready for marriage. You don't even have one table in your, in your house where you sit down and read. No. For the ladies, it's one picture onto another. That... <laughs> Amen. And then for the guys, football. Or gist. You know guys can gist too. Say more go gist. They just sit down. Just take, just settle down one day during the week. Just go out, maybe go to a restaurant. Especially one of the popular restaurants in town. I will not call the name, but you know. Just go there and sit down, observe people. You see some guys who sit down, make noise on the food. You hardly hear them talk intelligent things. Meanwhile, in the same restaurant, two people will come. Two heads of an organization, maybe two country directors will sit down and they are discussing the destinies of people. You know, when rich men say, let's go for lunch or let's go for tea. It's not the tea, oh. They want to talk. Amen? And I also recommend... That if you are in a relationship or you are already married, once in a while, it's a good thing to get the gift of a book or a material for your spouse. Very good gift. Very good gift. I appreciate the fact that you did cake for her. I know. You bought shoe for her. Or you bought tie for him. Buy book too. Let there be something in that head. Amen. Let the handsomeness be complete. If you are with me, say amen. amen. All right. Number three. Because of time, I'll just rush. We can't, we can't spend so much time to dwell on that. 
Let's look at the financial aspect. The financial aspect. Both must be moderate in spendings. In other words, they must have the virtue called financial prudency. Now, if you are already married, trust God to help your partner get to that point. Financial prudency. Financial prudency is not stinginess. Financial prudency is managing and conserving resources. Are we together? It's a virtue. And if you are in a relationship, help your partner to build it. It's not everything you see on the road you buy. Watermelon, you buy. Dibino, you buy. Apple. Oh, I like apple. Buy this one, buy this one. It's fresh now. You buy that one. Everything you buy, you buy everything. That's why you are not paying tight. Because you bought and bought till you use your tight to buy everything on the road. As though you are paying tax to the sellers. Financial prudency. Train yourselves to be able to give account for every cobble that enters your hand. It's not stinginess. That there, there is a place for being freelance with resources, but there is also a place for managing everything. It's accountability. You are a wife, they give you chop money. <laughs> you know, there's, there's something with women. And let me, let me teach both the women and the men. If a man, if you, if a man wants to buy something for you, there's just one question that comes out of his mouth: How much? And when he says how much, it means the grand total. But you know what the ladies will do? And I'll buy Maggie and two, two four fifty. How much is Maggie now? A packet, four fifty bar. See, I'm even accurate. Maggie is four fifty. That means if I get married, I can. <laughs> Some of you guys, you don't know. When you get married, you <laughs> that's when you now begin to feel like your wife is cheating you because you don't know how much a packet of Maggi is. A woman will tell you, eh, Maggi, one packet is 450. I go buy 10. This one is this one. And the guy is just saying one thing. How much? How the more you keep giving those details, the more he, he becomes annoyed. Amen. Women are detailed, men are wholesome. So if you are a woman, I'm teaching you now, when your husband asks you, you know, how much for something, be very good, be proactive enough to have calculated everything before that time. That's why you go to market. When you go to the market, the last time you went there, Maggie was 350. Now you go, Maggie is 450. So you should be able to understand how the prices are going and then plan a, a comprehensive list of food stuff for a moon so that when your husband asks you how much now i'm using that as a very that's basic that's just a practical it goes even on to other things because when you don't know how much for everything you want to do you can spend excess it means you are not prepared amen so both the man and woman must observe financial prudency now there's a problem i discovered some guys are very stingy. Guys, say amen. amen. Men, say amen. amen. Some, some are stingy. When I was talking about buying everything, buying everything, they were in their mind, they were saying, hey, apostle, tell them, tell them. Hold on, sir. Hold on. It's also not out of place to be a giver. And then some women suffer from what I call is actually I diagnosed it is a, is a, is a medical and a spiritual condition. Huh? Is it serious? You are you laughing? <laughs> I call it psychopathic materialism. Some women, they are good though. It's just that anything they see, they must get. So I diagnosed the disease and I called it, I, I think it's a, it's a psychological case. Psychopathic what? Materialism. Everything. Go and buy foodstuff for the house. You must squeeze out from that money to buy wrapper. You know, most times when you go to the market, 
It's like the foodstuff sellers are inside. So the people that will greet you outside are the wheelbarrows where you see wrappers and other things. And she can't just pass the wrappers and be in good terms and just be okay. No. She must come back and say, hey, how much with this one? One, one thousand. Ah, one, one thousand is cheap, oh. Eh. Hey. And you don't give me it for nine hundred man, buy three now. That's the chop money she's already using there. Oh. And it starts from relationship. Amen. I'm not saying that you shouldn't give. But let's let's be moderate about our attachment to material things. One of the things I started to do, one of the things I I started to you know train myself with early in life is how to bridle my appetite. There are not many things I like. In fact, if we pass a mic round here, many of you will be wrong if they say what does apostle like? Because you may think I like it yesterday. I don't like it today again. Amen. Learn to bridle your appetite. The fact that you have money doesn't mean you must use it. I hope you know that everything we have in terms of financial resources belongs to God. We are only stewards. We are only some of you don't know why you are always broke. Because before the salary enters, you have started spending it to eat. When the first thing you should have taken out of it was God's portion, which is the tithe. So God has seen that you are a bad steward of his resources. That's why he has a problem blessing you. If you heard that, say amen. Yeah. So learn to breathe your appetite. It's good once in a while to spoil yourself, but that should not be a necessity. Let it be by the way. And that's the problem we are having. That's the reason why, you know, a lot of guys feel that they can buy ladies. When they are after a lady, they believe if they can buy suya or take her to, where's that place? They call it, what's the biggest shawarma joint in this town? Because I know ladies like shawarma. Ladies say amen. Ah, they don't want to say amen again. <laughs> no, it's good now. Isn't it? Shawarma is good though. Just don't eat it every day. Amen. So what's the biggest shawarma joint in this city? Eh? City Star. Now wow. I don't know when last I enter City Star. Me like this. I don't know when last. <laughs> Amen. So let's try to balance our spendings and our excesses in terms of finances. Also, another virtue financially, both must be committed to the financial principles of God's word. Both must be committed to the financial principles of God's word. As a husband, as a wife, you both should be able to understand the basics, the basic principles for financial dominion from the word of God. That's why you read your Bible together every day. Tithing is there. Giving is there. Isn't it? And all the other principles. And if you are in a relationship, start it now. Start it now. Your financial life is going to look like the principles upon which they are built. There are some people who don't know how to give. There are some who can give God, but they can't give their spouse. Abi, I want to balance it today. There are some who if... They say, ah, we are doing this in church. We are doing, ah, they can give, 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 give. Or they are sown into man of God's life. Hey, but give your own spouse is a problem. So how some people have a name for that? They call them Bokan Weji. You give more outside than inside, isn't it? You are a native doctor for others. And then there are those who can spend on their spouse. But when it comes to God, they are owing tight for three months. Amen. So there is a place of balance that we can come to. Where you give God his portion and then you give to Caesar his portion. Amen. So both must be committed to the financial principles. It therefore means you must study. Let me challenge us. Take out one month this year. Take out one month and decide to build yourself on finances alone. Start by opening your Bible and searching all the financial principles of God's word. Are you not tired of that level where you are? Can't you see that what you are earning is not enough for you to fulfill your dream? 
So if there are principles in the word of God that can establish you and give you increase and bring you to dominion, can't you search the scriptures? I know there are other Christians who they only read spiritual books. If you say money or finances, you are becoming carnal. Like some of you now. The way I'm talking on these finances, I'm already a carnal, a carnal person in your mind. Let me tell you the truth. Christianity without, somebody said anointing without money is annoyance. It's true. Christianity without money, you will compromise before you know it. Build yourself. Study the principles. At sometimes when the salary is not coming for three months, you and your wife, you begin to pray. Now God will rescue you in two ways. First of all, he may rescue you by bringing the daily bread. Isn't it? But then, if God truly wants to solve financial crisis, He will give you a principle. He will give you a strategy. There are families that they don't have strategies for their finances. They have been married for five years, four years. No strategy. It's as the money comes, we spend it. Why? Because my husband is working in an NGO. Hey, after the money, they go pay him now. Say, so, no, continue. begin to let me tell you something because the economy especially in this nation where we live in if you are if you depend on salary you are a slave already i'm sorry to say this if you depend on salary alone you are a slave because once they don't pay you that salary so what else can i do amen next time you are celebrating your fiance's birthday buy her a, a book on finance buy yourself two buy two buy one for her buy one for yourself then two of you read for one month amen so both must be committed to financial principles of god's word also both if possible should have at least a means of income a means of income you notice i didn't say a source of income you understand that i think that word is out of place i don't believe there's something called source of income because your source is god number one every other thing you are doing is just a channel by which god can legitimately bless you the bible says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessing so all that you do in terms of work or business or whatever it is is just the natural means by which your blessings which is spiritual can be translated did you get what i said so it is advisable both should be that doesn't mean if the young man is not doing anything for now you must not be in a relationship with him no if he has a vision for his future and is already working towards it you can start from somewhere and then with time we trust god that at least he should be doing something the reason is so that you don't find a situation where one person is depending on the other i don't know where they got that theory from in marriage fine as a husband as a father you must take care of your family the bible says if you cannot take care of your family you are worse than an unbeliever and you have denied the faith is that not so so in marriage yes the husband the father has responsibility but in relationship you probably are just only in relationship you never go alter you never even go see your parents and all the bills are on your head where did you get that from the bible There's trouble this night too. People are not answering me again. <laughs> now, am I saying don't give? No. But it is, I think it is out of place if you begin to assume that responsibility. So that you don't have a situation where one person becomes over-dependent. Let me tell you something about this life. If you become over-dependent on another person, that pressure will begin to make them back out little by little or the relationship will turn sour because the guy will always be complaining because he's always giving so it's not out of place for you to do for you to be earning as a man and as a woman it's not out of place to work and earn your own living yes he's giving you you to one day send him recharge card eh? one day buy at least a shirt send it to him let him know that it's not because of his money you are around him 
Yes, he has a responsibility to take care of you when he gets married to you. But he has seen a virtue in you that even when we're that hot, at least I can fall back. Remember the extra life thing I, talk, I talked about? Yeah, so it's not out of place. There are some ladies who, you know, I asked a question. I asked somebody something yesterday. I said, I studied the North, especially the Northeast here. And I discovered that this is not for everybody. But you find that majority or a huge number of ladies around this part are not trained to be self-dependent. Is that true? Yeah. So I asked somebody a question yesterday. I said, why is it like that? And the person answered me and said, well, you know, maybe because of um, the other religion that is dominant here. And you know, in the other religion, they don't consider women as anything. Just marry you, marry you, marry you, marry you. Keep, keep all of you inside one house. So maybe that's the mindset that has gradually crept into believing sisters. But sisters, I came to encourage you. If God blesses you while you are still single, enjoy it. Build yourself financially. Don't be afraid of even buying a car if God has blessed you to that extent. Are you hearing me? There's nothing. Forget about what people say. Let me tell you something. We must learn to live our lives cultured upon principles that are founded from the word of God. Not what people are saying. Because when you become successful, they will still be talking. So the young man is afraid of, of dating the lady because she's working in UN Ocha. She's earning one million. And him is just earning 250. Say, ah, this kind of girl. No, sir. No, sir. No. At least here in this place, we have God-fearing ladies that can be earning much and are still humble. They are still submissive. That's true wealth. You have enough, but everything you have is under your control. If you are with me, say amen. So it's not out of place. No idleness. Amen. You started a relationship with him. He was not doing anything. Now you don't reach to marry. He's still not doing anything. When you get married, you become a houseman. You know there's housewife. I'm afraid that there can also be a houseman. At least. Especially if you are a man. At least. Make sure you are doing something. Find something to do. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, whatever your hand find it to do, do it well. The principle in the kingdom is that he that is faithful in little shall be what? Faithful. Even if it's just 20,000, at least. And then God will promote you and lift you. Same thing to the women, to the ladies. You read the scripture that Bro Henry, read, Minister Henry read. I think that's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. He says, he, is that, he that giveth bread and seed will multiply the seed you have sown. And then in verse 9, he says that we will have enough. That God is able to make all grace abound towards us. So that we having in all sufficiency may abound unto every good work. When you are not idle, when you are doing something, no matter how little it is, you are, what it is you are earning, at least you will have enough for yourself and enough to be able to reach out to people because it is in giving that God lifts you. Amen? So get something doing. I'm challenging us this night. Don't just sit down and say, hey, there's no job. There's no job. Don't you have a head? Amen? So there should be no what? Idleness. One other thing I want us to take note of before we leave this part. Both must understand the importance of investment. I talked a little about it, but let me talk about it now. Both must understand the importance of what? Investment. Everybody shout investment. You, you are not talking today. Okay, let's close the teaching. It's like the teaching is too heavy today, but shout that word investment. When, I, when I'm talking about this, I'm speaking both to salary earners and businessmen and women. Both must understand. Both the man and the woman must understand the place of investment. Listen, let me tell you. The future of family is plan. 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 After praying, plan. After praying, plan. 
Some of us came from families where your parents worked in the government. And for 30 years, 25 years, they were working with the government, local government, state government, federal government, collecting government salary, riding government cars, living in government quarters. For instance, if you enter, and I say this with all due respect to lecturers, if you enter the university, you see the houses of some lecturers, you will not believe that they are in the category that they are in. Why? Because that's government property is free. But after 25, 30 years of working with the government and it's time for you to leave, you just realize that you spent 30 years working with the government, you didn't build one house. No, because. Eh? No, because. Now you know plan. Plan. Invest. Even if what you are earning is 10,000 naira, the key to investment is saving. If you can be disciplined to remove 1,000 from that 10,000 every month, after 10 months, you have 10,000. No matter how small, 10,000 can start you a business. Even if it's Akara, you fry. Somebody say, Apostle, me, fry Akara, me like this. That's, that's, and that's, and that's, why, you are going, you, that's why you'll be broke. Ask businessmen and women that are doing well. They will tell you how they started from nothing. How many of you remember our program, Kingdom Finances and Entrepreneurship? You heard all the testimony of those entrepreneurs. It started with nothing. Invest. Plan. Your parents, you, they worked in the government till you grew up and got ready to get married. No house, no investment, no nothing. Now they are in debt. You have seen what has happened to them and you are about to repeat the same pattern. How do I know? Because of your spendings. So invest. Don't depend on salary alone. Plan. If you don't have a business idea, keep saving the money. Then look for people who are into business and ask them questions. Amen? See, I trust God that every family here, a time will come where if you are working, you are not working because of the salary. You are just working either because you are fulfilling purpose in that organization or because you are solving problems there. But that there are other streams of income so that if you and your wife want to have a retreat, you can shut down and go for the retreat and nothing will happen. Money is still entering your account. Or if you want to go on a vacation, all expense paid trip, you can go. So we are looking at me when I say vacation, it's good though. I know so our parents don't know those things. Let me tell you, it's one of the ways you can spice a marriage. Plan vacation. At least once every year. When you were single, you used to take leave. Isn't it? And your leave, you just take it and go and while away time with friends. Some of us don't know how to rest. I think I'll do a teaching on how to rest. Some of us don't know how to rest. When you are supposed to be resting, you are still working. Now that you are married, as you take that leave, take it with your wife. Then two of you, because God has blessed you and you have been able to multiply your resources, you have money saved up somewhere. You can go somewhere, maybe Jamaica, Tanzania. Go for a vacation. Change environment. Fly on the plane. Snap pictures. It has a way of spicing the marriage. But when you walk from, from January to December, you walk every day. You, that's where you get angry and the, 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 the marriage is up. And it starts from where? Investment. Because if you don't invest, there is no vacation for you. You want borrow, do I? Borrow, then you come back and start paying. How many of us are learning something today? Some brothers are saying, eh, hey, vacation. <laughs> As they are planning the vacation, plan well. Because when you enter a shopping mall and your wife tell you, ah, oh, honey, I like this dress. How much? 25,000. And I say, no, on, you know, let's go to the other side. <laughs> Amen. We sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. Oh, Lord. For your name is great.
We sing praises to your name. many have we looked at? We looked at the intellectual aspect. We've looked at the financial aspect. Let's look at the emotional aspect. Then after that, one more, and then we can wrap it up for today. The emotional aspect has to do with responding to the needs of your spouse. Understanding and responding to the needs of your spouse when i say emotional some of you feel that word is carnal it's not carnal though. it depends on how you see it being romantic it does not mean you are immoral being romantic simply means allowing your love for one another to be expressed and there are godly ways by which it can be expressed let's look at the emotional aspect first peter chapter 3 verse 7 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 I wish we had the living bible we would have read it in the living bible it gives a better picture but let's just look at it in New King James 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 ok let's start from verse 1 let's start from verse 1 wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Go on. We'll read to verse 3. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Go on. Verse 3. Do not let your adornment be merely outward arranging the hair, wearing gold or putting on fine apparel. Go on. Verse 4. Rather let it be the hidden person of the heart. He's talking about the heart now. With the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God now, this is a template for the state of your heart which is where your emotions are captured so God is giving a pattern for the woman to have a gentle and a quiet spirit and I will explain why now go to verse 7 I will explain why husbands likewise dwell with them with what? With what? Give us in King James. Please, very quickly, media. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to what? Knowledge. That means as a man, there is a knowledge by which you treat women. I'm co hold on, I'm coming there. And then the Bible began to advise giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heads together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered the bible says in as part of the knowledge that a man must have in dealing with his wife or with his lady whichever the case will be the bible says understand that they are the weaker vessel not that they are the inferior that they are the weaker now this let me relate this to a, emotional the emotional aspect listen to this men absorb women respond are you hearing me what did i say men women respond say it again men women say it again men women is that true it is that's why if you're a guy and you're always shouting have you seen those kind of relationships they're always shouting at the lady shout on her even in public no time has the has the guy ever been quiet or you know play a little or laugh a little he's always shouting shouting you know one thing with men is let me tell you something about guys especially normally for a man a man is a mental individual he's a mental creature isn't it 
So he's always calculative in everything he does. That's why when you enter today's, you and your wife, eh? One person is looking. Let me use you. Okay, no, you are, let me not use you. Come, my dear, let me use you. Uh-huh. Well, enter today's with your wife. Notice the two of them. If they enter together, one person's eye or eyes are on the goods displayed. The other person's eyes is on his phone. The lady's eyes are on the goods. She's the one who is, who is doing the shopping. The guy is on his phone. You know what he's looking at? He's not chatting, no. He's looking at his account balance. <laughs> so they are walking around. And she's just... The more she goes to the expensive part, the more he's looking at the phone very well. Let me see whether I have enough for this. Amen? Good. Thank you. God bless you there. So... Men are calculative. That's the reason why a man expects that everything and everybody around him are thinking like him. It's natural with men, isn't it? That's the reason why when the woman does something that is not in line with what they want, they begin to shout or they get offended because they believe that everybody around them thinks like them. But remember what I just told you, men absorb. It's within you yourself that you think that she's, she knows what you are thinking. Women respond. So if you want her to think what you are thinking and as well do what you want, you must be able to pass across information. This is what I call emotional intelligence. Amen? Emotional intelligence. So it is what you tell her or what you do to her that she will express. So if you are a nagging man, you are always shouting every time. You are an African man, you want to show that you are always in charge. You understand, ba? Some of you are looking at me, you don't want, you don't want, to, you don't want to agree. Some of us grew up in houses where they taught you that, see, you, as the man, you are in charge, you are in control. That's the reason why you even up till now, you still find situations where you hear that a man is beating his wife. And then they have to go for settlement here and there. The worst is when a guy in a relationship is beating the lady. Excuse me, have you paid for her? So, listen, this, uh, this emotional intelligence, if you learn it, it will help you. That men absorb and women what? Respond. So if you are always violent as a man, very soon you will bring out a violent woman, the type you don't want to see. That knife I spoke about, you will see it. So she can be putting up with everything. You are always shouting every day. The day it will reach her here, you will be shocked. Amen? Yes. Both must learn to understand the needs of one another emotionally. And that means that both must be romantic. Both must be romantic. Spend time to understand your partner. And that will help you to become romantic. To be romantic means to be able to express the love between the two of you. Now, men see love differently. Listen to this. Men see love differently. Women see love differently as well. To a man, I love you is respect and honor. Yes or no? Yes. Men, am I saying the truth? Yes. You don't see them? So say... I love you to a man is what? Respect. So if you tell him I love you, I love you and you are always trying to contest his place or he cannot tell you something and you take his counsel or take his word and do it. When you say I love you again, he looks at you as a liar. And then to the woman, I love you means what? Talk for yourself now. (laughs) I love you means give me attention. I love you means give me time. For some, I love you means buy gifts for me. Some of you are pretending you don't want to, you don't want to answer. It's true. And you know one thing about women, especially the ones that are not materialistic, the ones that are good and God-fearing. Eh? As men, you are always planning big. What you want to buy is big. You want to buy her a car. Isn't it? First of all, buy that apple you saw on Dambua Road first for her. When you buy that one, that is the faith. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Buy her the apple first before you promise her the car. Am I saying it through ladies? Yes. 
Your car you have been planning for five years, it has not arrived. Amen. That, this, this is responding to their needs emotionally. It is very important. It's very important. It is one of the ways by which relationships and marriages are lubricated. It's not every time we are praying, 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 praying. No. There are some times where we need to just laugh and play together. Some men, you don't know how to play. If you are a brother and you don't know how to play, before you marry, play. Oh. Go and start doing 10 10 outside, you know? <laughs> Buy skipping rope and start learning it with your sisters. Don't go and get married and then keep that girl in a boring house. Don't try that. Eh? Say, hey, Apostle, you know our game now football and our football. Abba. And you know, I discovered a secret. It's also romantic when you have a little knowledge into women affairs. Yes. For instance, just give him your phone. Say, let's take a selfie. Ah! Let's take a selfie. You see the brother? He's burning his face. Say, you have started again. You have started again. Or God sometimes just conform. Oh. Are you hearing me? And then for the ladies, please train yourself to understand what your man likes. Are you hearing me? Train yourself to understand so that sometimes you people can have an emotional moment because you can discuss with him on that. I was watching something one day online. You know, footballers and their, their spouse, how they relate with their spouse, footballers. Some of you say, Apostle, they watch that one. Are they watch that one? No? I'm a pastor to everybody. I watch everything, except, you understand? Uh -huh. I watch everything. And I saw this footballer from France. I think they call him Poba. I saw him and his wife and his, and his son. And they were jogging ball together. And the wife was jogging. I said, hey, woman, they jog ball. If you are a woman, one of the ways to increase the emotional moments in your home, learn what your man likes. And be involved in, I was joking with a lady one day, I said, a married woman rather, you know, she came, problem here, and I said, okay, one of the ways you can solve your problem, it was a parable, like a joke, but there was a message there. I said, look for what your husband likes. And if you discover what he likes is a slice of bread, squeeze yourself, put it inside that slice of bread, close it. So that when he's eating it, he will eat you. You know what that means? Look for what he likes or what he relates with. Learn about it so that you people can share a moment together. It's not out of place. Men, if you agree, say amen. amen. I will not ask the ladies because they don't, they don't, some of them don't agree. It's true. Sometimes as the man, you have to watch Telemundo. Or uh, what, what you call it? Z-Wall. Jesus, I hate that channel. <laughs> lies upon end. From one film to another, from one episode, all just lies. <laughs> and you know the way they, they, they when they, they will end it with this, they will put you on suspense at the end. And you see the ladies, Ooh! and as the guys, you are there, you are, what's, what's the meaning of this? I mean? Oh, God, learn how to watch it sometimes. So. For peace to reign, oh. are you hearing me? Learn it. Learn it. This is the Bible says we should dwell with them with what? Understanding. You know the meaning of understanding. One person decides to be under and allow the other person stand. Sometimes allow them to have their way. The Bible says they are weaker vessels. Allow them some expression. Not every time. <laughs> If you have to go and learn how to write a poem as a man, go and learn how to write it. Read it for her. Even if it's once every month. After dinner one evening, just hold the poem and start reading. Did you see what the spirituality guys did? Some of you guys, you, don't, you are very poor in that one. Well done. You have to learn. Oh. If you are like me that can play an instrument. Ah, I'll, I'll help. But if you don't know how to sing or do anything, at least go and learn. Borrow, tell somebody to write poem for you. Then one. 
Amen. Or sometimes join them in the kitchen, wash plates. Listen, let me tell you something. Okay, I will say this and I will, I will move from here because it looks like it's now becoming so much on one side. But why I'm, I'm stressing on this part is because of the society we are in. This African male-dominated society. That's why. Let me tell you one thing with a woman. If you want to get them to agree to anything, make sure the atmosphere of that conversation is highly emotional. They will agree to everything you say. Simple. Food for thought. Is it true? Celebrate God for that. Yeah. Sometimes when married couples come and visit me, I used to I'll, I'll give them wine. So I was ah no apostle, we are the one that should be giving you. I'm just teaching you something. When was the last time you sat for dinner with her and then you opened the wine as though it's champagne? Even if it's not champagne, pretend it's champagne. Look for glass, put it there, and toast. Do some things to that's just be emotional a little. Amen. And then for the ladies, it's not every time we are emotional. There are times where you, you have to be. Amen. So learn to respond to the needs of one another. Amen. I wish I could talk more. There are so many things, but I'll have to leave there because of time. Let's go to the fourth aspect. Character or the fifth now. Character and self-control. Character and self-control. Beware of the following. Anger. Anger. I'm speaking both to the man and the woman. Beware of the following. Anger. Hate. Malice. Extreme jealousy. To mention but a few. Beware of these ones. Anger. 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 Well, it is natural for you to find most times the man angry. I gave you the story of that my secondary school mate. That when he's angry, he can carry anything, isn't it? It's a problem when you are angry as a man and you are always good at using your fists. It's a problem. Some of you brothers that are not yet married, you ask, when you hear this kind of thing, you say, ah, how will he do that kind of thing? But right now, you're the, you're the vex already for the relationship. Oh. Small thing, you don't vex. I'm telling you, when you get married, if you don't control that vexing, one day, the five-fold ministry will rise. You know, this is what I call fivefold ministry. The apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, all at once. Anger, beware of it. I'm talking about character now. Beware of anger. The Bible says anger lies in the bosom of what? Fools. I've also seen women that can be angry. Hey, it's more terrible when a woman is angry. I was listening to this, a message by my father and the Lord on, on this story. On this. And he shared a testimony how that there was a lady who was in a relationship with a guy. And anytime she's angry, she can do anything. One time she was angry, they were eating. Sermon and soup. And then the one she has already put inside the soup, like that, on his face. Another time they were in the kitchen, she was so angry, she used the frying pan she was using to fry and heat. Now I'm telling you, you know that's rage now. The Bible says, listen, the Bible says in Proverbs that he that had control over his spirit is more than him that taketh a city. If you don't know how to apply self-control, you are not yet ready for marriage. And if you are already married, begin to trust God to help you. Anger, beware of it. Hate. You know that kind of thing that you are in a relationship and all of a sudden you just begin to feel one unhealthy hatred for your partner. Have you been there before? You start avoiding the person. Somebody said, yes, sir. Is it by experience? <laughs> he will call you, not pick. They vex me, draw. And you are with your friends, so you said that. Instead of you to be excited when he calls it, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Let me tell you something. Listen. Listen. I discovered that anytime you wake up and for no reason you feel some form of hate and resentment towards people you love I believe you are under some form of manipulation did you hear what I said? yes 
I believe so. Why would you just wake up and hate somebody you love? Why? For the men, you know how they will do their own? They will not talk to the woman. They will just enter their car, drive off. Then in the night, they will just drive back, eat, and sleep. The next morning, he now gets his mood. Say, hey, honey, how far now? Now lie. Nothing like that. Oh. You must apologize for that yesterday. Hate. There are other things I said there. Malice. Extreme jealousy. Jealousy is a very important issue. In fact, <laughs> it's something that you find mostly in relationships. Jealousy. That's why I said extreme jealousy. Jealousy has a good side. Okay? When you love people and you are jealous about them so that you don't want anything evil to happen to them but when it becomes extreme that you begin to monitor them or control them that's a serious issue that's witchcraft i believe let me give you an example the guy doesn't want the lady to be around people anytime she's around other guys insecurity is inside they will take the phone and call her say where are you Say, hey, I'm standing in front of gate one. Who are you standing with? Who is by your left? Who is by your right? Where are you going to? Oh yeah, go back, go back, go back. Have you seen people like that? Yes. Brother, that is wrong. That's witchcraft already. You know, I said, I don't like you being around people. Eh? I don't like you being... I saw the way that guy was looking at you. What's your stress now? Some ladies will go as much as reading the guy's messages. You see, they're quiet now, ba. <laughs> Frankly speaking, I don't, I don't see a reason why you should do that. You know one thing about trust? Trust is a bond that you build. You decide to trust a person. And if you want to really trust a person, keep your eyes away from some things. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that be careful if you are always interested in hearing about people. Because you too, one day a bird will hear about you and carry it somewhere. Always reading his messages. The last time we were in church, after service, they say, please hug one or two persons, shake them, and then just greet them. God bless you as you are going. God prosper you this week. And then one of the sisters just came, ah, brother, so, so, and so. And, hey. You never marry a moon. Now you are already looking at him like this. This kind of eye that means, what's the meaning of that? She will not talk. Then when they go home and they separate, she will now send him a chat. Say, that lady, the way she hugged you like that. Now, wow. Somebody say jealousy. It happens. It happens. You have to be able to con beware of these things. There is a place for it whereby... You are very protective about the person, but don't be overprotective. Okay? Allow them some space sometimes. Don't always monitor them. So beware of such things. I'm still on character and self-control. Neatness and cleanliness should also be a watchword. Neatness. 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 When you were a young lady, when you were single, you like wearing flowing gowns, and flowery, what they call what's the name of that skirt? Is it Caribbean skirt or what they call? Then balloon gown. Abi with high heels. Now you are married. You are married. God has answered you. You are in his house now. You tie wrap on your chest. Mama Godia. I bet you get cold water for your fridge. You get a quick ice block. Then you carry you stroll around the compound with it with the wrap on your chest. Say, ah, yeah, we are married now. Uh -uh. But when you're in the relationship, you, you will not allow him to see you like that. Oh. Remember that he's still working in IOM. And he has a colleague who is not yet married. And she's still appearing very good. And men are visual creatures. So always dress fine. Comport yourself. Neatness. People have said that neatness is what? Next to godliness. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that neatness is a proof of spiritual, spirituality. Because a truly spiritual man or woman is organized. 
Neatness speaks well of your identity. Neat, neatness gives you confidence. Be neat. Not that they come around you and they can't hug you. No. The money you are making, spend time to use it to take care of yourself. Some of you don't, you don't believe in buying good clothes for yourself. As much as it is an excess to always buy and not wear. Please, try as much as possible to ensure that your wardrobe is changed once in a while. Is that okay? Look good as a man. As a lady, look good. In fact, more importantly for the lady, because let me tell you something. A lady is like the pride of a man. Have you wondered why anytime he wants to take you out, he will always tell you before time so that you can dress your best and then he doesn't mind staying in that eatery for a longer time you know why and anybody that comes he will introduce ah this is my fiance why because you are his pride the bible says the head of a man is christ and the head of the woman is who is the man so the woman is like a reflection of the man that's the reason why god created the woman from the ribs of a man so the woman is like a bigger expression or a more refined version are we together so neatness good dressing sense cleanliness very important listen to this a woman's greatest strength is something i picked you know from somewhere a woman's greatest strength someone once told me this that a woman's greatest physical strength is her mouth and a man's greatest physical strength is his fist notice i use the word physical isn't it uh-huh a father told me this one time so listen to my own addition self-control is when both have learned to bridle the use of such did you hear what i said if it is true that the woman's greatest physical strength physical low is her mouth and it's true i hope you know some of you don't know the history of nigeria the amalgamation of nigeria if you read history very well, Flora Shaw was not a wife of Lord Lugard. You know, it was Lord Lugard, under Lord Lugard's regime, that Nigeria was amalgamated together. Flora Shaw was the one who suggested the name Nigeria. She was the one who pushed that idea to him. She was not his wife. In fact, from the British side, they saw her like a prostitute. But her mouth influenced what we see today we call nigeria so i don't think it's out of place that a woman's greatest physical strength is her mouth but self-control and then the woman the man is where his hand is always action self-control is when we learn to bridle both together amen and so there are men here who need to begin to make vows that no matter what happens in your marriage you will not raise your hand on a woman is that true they don't want to answer me no problem Amen. Amen. I will not raise my hand on a woman. And then as, as a woman, learn to control what you say. All right, let's round up now. There are things to exercise self-control on. So many things, I'll give you a few and then we'll be done with this. Number one, your words. Learn to exercise self-control on your words. Always learn to say the right and the good things. The Bible says, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. Number two, your affection, your feelings. Learn to exercise self-control. It's okay to have feelings, but it's not too okay to allow your feelings control you. Number three, your lifestyle, how you behave amongst people. Number four, your appetite. Learn to exercise self-control. Appetite is a good word, but if you allow it to rule you, it becomes a problem. Even if you like shawarma, don't let everybody know you like shawarma. Amen? Both must, be learn, to be, both must learn to be loving and friendly. Both must learn to be loving and friendly, and also both must have respect for one another. Amen. Finally, we have looked at the spiritual aspect, intellectual aspect, the financial aspect, character and self-control. 
the emotional aspect, isn't it? How many now? Five, right? Number six, and this is final. The sexual aspect. Say amen. Some of you, when I mention that word, you say, ah. Let's talk about sex a little. First of all, in marriage, sex is very important. God created it. God approves of it. It is for the consummation of a marriage. It is for the connectivity between the spouse. And it is also for the longevity of the relationship. God said, and the two shall become what? One. It's not on the altar. When they say it on the altar, it's by faith. It is fulfilled where? In intercourse. So it is very important that married people do everything they can to develop intelligence in that area. It is a very vital aspect of your growth. The sexual aspect. Amen? We have seen situations where just because you are annoyed with your partner, you staff them of sex. is wrong. It's very wrong. It's a very wrong psychology. Amen? The Bible even said that it is only in the time of prayer and fasting that a man and a woman should separate themselves. Isn't it? Then the Bible says immediately after that they should do what? Come together very quick. So it is very, very important in marriage. But for courtship, no. Amen? No. In case you are single, just close your ear from what I'm saying now. Are you hearing me? Say, I'm but apostle, we have to learn now. Now keep quiet. Go and learn in the marriage. When you get married, go and learn. After all, marriage is an institution, isn't it? The only institution where they give you a certificate from the beginning. That means no graduation. So go and learn it there. It's even good you learn it there so that you can explore. Amen. Now that you are single, keep yourself away. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, Paul said, Now concerning the things that I've written to you, it is good that a man should not touch a woman. This is for singles. One of the things that is fast, you know, phasing out in the body of Christ, now especially in this generation, is sexual purity. It is becoming hard to find singles who are not yet married, who abstain from this. And I'm going to talk about it whether you like it or not because this thing is real and this is what God wants for us. The Bible says that this is the will of God, our sanctification, that each of us must learn to possess our bodies. There are people in relationships, relationship or not marriage, who believe that if I don't give him the opportunity of sex, the relationship will not progress. Then it's not a relationship or it's not from God. We have heard stories like people who say, How will I starve him now? Are you his wife? Somebody will even say, Ah, his wickedness now. At least I must give him once in a while now. Let me ask you a question. When he was born, was he doing it? Some of you don't like this part, but I will say it too. I will talk about it. Thank God you are seated there. I will talk about it. As far as the relationship is concerned, I believe and I stand by it that both parties must abstain until marriage. In fact, if I'm going to counsel anybody that will get into marriage, I must enter that part. Amen. So, in case you are here, you are planning to bring your your wife to be or your husband to be to me. I'm going there. Very, very important. Let me explain something I call the mystery of sex. This is what God told me about sex. Remember I told you it is for consummation of the marriage. It is for to, to, to enhance connectivity between the spouse. Sex is more than just an act. Sex is a spiritual or a physical medium that permits the transference of spiritual possibilities and realities. Sex is actually an exchange platform that's why it is called intercourse is between two people listen God told me anytime two people have sex what happens is that the spirit that authorizes that activity sponsors or comes to sponsor 
the consummation of the both individuals. That means if you have sex in marriage, who authorized it? God. Isn't it? So when you meet with your wife, it's not just the two of you that are there. The Holy Ghost is there. To fulfill the spiritual aspect of that action. The reason why God gave pleasure there is just so that you people will look forward to it. But it is beyond pleasure. It is a way mystery by which a man and a woman can become connected and become one. It is on that platform that the grace that is in your life as a man can be transferred to your wife. You don't know? Yes. It's in the Bible. Isaiah said, and, and I went into the prophetess. What made her a prophetess? His wife. And she conceived and bore his son. And God began to name the sons. And God told him, I and, my ch and the children that the God has given to me are for signs and wonders. See, let me tell you something. One of the ways we interact in marriage is by that activity. Because when you meet together, there is a connection in the spirit. That's the reason why if it is now done outside of marriage, that one God does not approve of it again. So what happens is that a demon, because when it is done outside of marriage, it becomes rebellion. And Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 says, Marriage is honorable unto all, and the bed undefiled. For homemongers and adulterers, God will judge. So when it is done outside marriage, it becomes rebellion to God. And the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of what? Witchcraft. Which means that the spirit that comes when that is done, when you sleep with somebody that is not your wife or somebody that is not your husband, is the spirit that is a demon or from the devil to consummate together. You have heard of things that they call soul ties. Listen to me very well because some of you, your deliverance is here. Have you heard of soul ties? It's true. It's a demonic technology by which Satan connects two people who are not supposed to be together or to be intimate in that respect. So you get married, but you keep seeing that person in your dream. That's the phenomenon of spiritual husband and spiritual wife. And those of you that don't believe in it, I'll do a teaching on it very soon. I will show you from the scripture. It's true. It's real. Another thing that I, I, I told you, it permits transference, isn't it? Now watch this. My dear, come. Come. Come, sir. Um... No, I can't. You are here with your wife, so I will not use you. Martha, please come. Come, my dear. The ladies stand here. Just stand here together. Watch this. I'm showing you a powerful mystery spiritually. I'm a pastor. We do deliverance for people. And I want to show you where I've seen many people's problem from. Watch this. Remember I told you that it is a platform for exchange. Isn't it good? A child is not the only thing you get from sex. So, an exchange, spiritually and soul-wise. If this guy now is a pastor, so I can use you. Let's say this guy in his family, they have a demonic pattern of delay. Watch this. And this lady now, Okay, let's say she's clean from her family. There's no problem. Then this one, they have a demonic pattern of witchcraft. There, there are too many witches in the family. So people die anyhow. And you hardly see people that will serve God and last. Isn't it? God forbid. Oh. God forbid. Uh, hey, you are safe. And then let's say this lady now, people rise and fall. It's a pattern that Satan has established in their family. Remember that the life of a man physically is where? In his blood. That means anybody that shares blood with her shares those possibilities. Except they have discovered and imposed a supernatural law that breaks it. So this young man now comes, sleep with this one. You know, that's what, especially unbelieving brothers, that's what they do. Sleep with this one. He has tested no be so. Then he moves to the next one. Sleeps with this one. He has tested no be so. Maybe his, his chart for this year is to have 10. Now he is done with two already. Remember, in his family is what? Delay. In her family is what? Witchcraft. 
so there's been a transference isn't it now unknown to her she has received of that delay that's the reason why you meet somebody once you say it was a mistake they, what do they call it in film they say one night stand <laughs> one night stand can be the, the, the beginning of a generational issue watch many people who find it difficult to stay in a relationship trace some of them there is polygamy in their lineage so he has collected that from her witchcraft and every night he's seen people in dreams isn't it his spiritual life starts going down he's even dead then he comes to this family what's in this family huh? rising and falling god forbid and then they meet and he collects it how many is he having now he has delay he has witchcraft he has what rising and falling come sir then he comes and meets this wonderful church sister wonderful damsel and then they call it mistake oh, but it happened between them this innocent sister what's she going to receive now on this platform delay what again witchcraft what again now the shocking thing is that she will go away to her own family not knowing that these things have been transferred and then because of the connection of blood satan is at liberty to manipulate the destiny of her siblings all of a sudden three of her elder ones nobody has gotten married and they are all virgins they didn't do anything why somebody in the bloodline because that's how satan operates he operates on legal grounds somebody in the bloodline went and collected something the realm of the spirit does not is not concerned whether you know it or not when you activate a law it is activated, activated in the spirit this is the pro this is where you find generational problems in families are we together god bless you go we'll see that thank you that's the reason why even to the new testament the bible is loud about sexual purity why this is the mystery now vice versa if that guy was anointed let's say in his family they are always blessed isn't it and then he legitimately gets married remember i said the spirit that sponsors the act will come to consummate it if he legitimately gets married to this lady that has rising and falling in her family what do you think will happen all of a sudden the possibility that is in his family spiritually will superimpose on this that's when she gets married to him and in less than two years she breaks forth that's how it happens sit down god bless you young people keep yourself pure any guy that will not stay in a relationship until he sees under your skirt is from the devil run away from him as you are running rebuke him are you hearing me and it becomes very hard when people indulge in sexual activities it becomes very hard if they will eventually get married it becomes hard it becomes difficult the greatest bond whether it's in a relationship or a marriage is the love that comes from god that love is pure is peaceable is willing to wait wait so that when you get married you can enjoy what god has ordained for us brothers and sisters this is all that i can say for now but i believe if we work with all these six we can lay a good foundation of god's pattern for a healthy relationship and a fruitful marriage amen are we blessed can we pray rise on your feet let's pray Open your mouth and bless the world for what you have heard. Open your mouth and just bless the Lord. Thank Him for all that you have received, for all that you have heard. Thank Him for the knowledge that is received. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name.
In Jesus' name we pray. One prayer point and then I'll pray and speak over us and we are done for tonight. We have heard all that I have taught tonight. These are the basics, God's pattern. I want us to pray and ask the Lord for grace to walk with these patterns and see them established in our relationships and in our marriages. Some of you as the teaching was going on, you could, you could examine your weaknesses. You could examine the places where you, you had flaws in. I want us to lift up our voice and ask the Lord for grace. Grace that will help us to become strong in the area of our weaknesses. And to help us increase in the areas where we have strength. Man and woman, everybody in this room, open your mouth and pray. Ask the Lord for grace. Ask the Lord for grace. Ask the Lord for grace. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Pray. Lord, the grace to apply all that I've heard spiritually, intellectually, financially, emotionally. Some of you come from families where you were not taught these things. Some of us have been brought up being de depraved or having challenges in some of these areas. But if you are humble enough to ask God for grace tonight, God will release grace. Ask Him for grace. In the area of character and self-control. Above those challenges, ask Him for grace. I live for Jesus. Day after day. I live for Jesus It's come what may The Holy Spirit I will obey Come on, pray I live for Jesus They are friendly Ask the Lord for the grace of obedience. Ask the Lord for the grace of obedience. Obedience. Some of you, you have heard this before. For the grace to be committed to obey. To obey. These patterns that are downloaded from scripture. Ask him for grace. Ask him for grace. I will obey I live for Jesus Day after day The Holy Spirit I will obey I live for Jesus Strings Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Just lift your hands. Eyes closed everywhere. As we conclude this series on building godly relationships. One of the things that happens. Every time we come, we come before his presence. Is that by certain systems God multiplies grace for tonight and the last two Sundays God has multiplied grace to us through the knowledge of his word and I want to pray and activate that grace upon our lives father in the name of Jesus I speak over everyone here I prophesy on their relationships and on their marriages I declare that it will be a success I declare that they will have wonderful relationships and fruitful marriages. Our God is called the Alpha Omega. 
In other words, you will start the relationship and it will not just end. You will start it and it will lead into marriage. In the name of Jesus. And for those of us that are married, the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will equip you with grace. Grace that will see to it that there is never a separation. Come on, agree with me by your amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for everyone here. Every marriage that is under any form of attack. I speak by the counsel of God and in the name of Jesus. Let the adversary be put to flight. Let the adversary be put to flight. Every doorway by which the enemy has explored that marriage. To cause confusion. To cause abrasion. And to cause separation. I close those doorways right now. I close those doorways right now. Father, I pray that the love in its vigor and freshness will return to them. In the name of Jesus. Father, everyone that is single, that is yet to be in a godly relationship that will lead to marriage. As we end this series, I ask by the providence of your mercy that within the next three months, by terrible things in righteousness, by the mysterious hand of God, let them locate their life partners. In the name of Jesus. Wherever he is or wherever she is on the surface of this earth, by revelation, I call them into your life. I call them into your life. I cancel the spirit of delay. Lift your hands. I need to pray. Some of you have godly, wonderful applying these things that you have heard but there is a spirit of delay manipulating in families that people will not get married or will not see their better half at the right time i rebuke the spirit of delay right now i banish you from their lives right now father if it was inherited as a form of generational curse by the blood of jesus we undo that curse now we undo that curse now in the name of jesus some of you are here, your marriages are being manipulated by the patterns that have outplayed themselves in your families. Your parents, your grandparents. Some of us, are, our relationships are suffering because of the pattern of polygamy in families that we come from. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the mystery of the blood, let there be a separation this night. I separate you from that bloodline curse. I separate you from that bloodline reproach. I separate you from that family predicament. Please lift your hands. The Bible says your wife shall be a fruitful vine. I come against the spirit of unfruitfulness. Listen, let me tell you something. Open your eyes, look at me. Ladies, let me talk to you. In my little years of deliverance and in my experience of counseling people, I discovered that one of the ways you trace the spirit of barrenness is when a young lady begins to have problem of growths around her womb. Is a spirit. Those growths are the spirit of barrenness being outplayed. Some of those growths, because of their presence, in a woman's reproductive system it can hamper your cycle and stop you from giving birth some of you are already married and that's what is happening some of you are yet single and you are already suffering from me lift your hands i want to pray for you in the name of jesus i banish the spirit of barrenness i banish the spirit of unfruitfulness if it was a pattern i declare that pattern comes to an end in your life in the name of jesus I speak the blessings over our relationships, the blessings of God over our relationships, over our marriages. I declare that they will prosper. I declare that they will be fruitful. I declare that your marriages will be heaven on earth. I declare that you and your spouse will become examples, models around your social community. People will look at your relationship or your marriages and they will say, I want to be like this sister. I want to be like that brother. Receive that grace now. In Jesus' great name we pray. Put your hands together. Give God a big, big hand of praise. Hallelujah.
before we close if you are here and you know you need to make the Lord Jesus or you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life you have listening all standing please all standing no movement anywhere no movement everywhere please all standing this is a very special moment if you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus you come to church perhaps you have been coming for this series but Jesus is not truly the Lord of your life I know by your lifestyle I know by the principles by which you conduct yourself let me give you an opportunity to say yes to him an opportunity to be born again or you are here and by all that you have heard or by the reason of your life you need to rededicate you need to surrender again to the Lord no movement anywhere all standing wherever you are I give you 30 seconds I want you to raise your right hand and I'll pray for you all standing eyes closed no movement please you need to say yes to the Lord Jesus you need to repent of your ways and return back to him or perhaps you used to be in the faith and then you veered off maybe because of the pressures of life or because of the relationships or the company you associated yourself with and you need to surrender again you need to rededicate your life lift your right hand wherever you are and I'm gonna pray for you eyes closed everywhere all standing lift your hand and I'll just pray for you the Bible says today if you would hear his voice don't have harden your heart do not harden your heart Jesus is calling you now Jesus is calling you now raise that right hand if there are any and then we'll pray I live for Jesus day after day if you are raising your right hand raise it very well and if your hands are raised I want you to walk to the front and meet me here now Either you are surrendering afresh, you are rededicating your life, or you need to accept the Lord Jesus. Walk to the front and meet me here. Come while you can. Come while there is an opportunity. Make a decision for Jesus. And let him be the Lord over your life forever. Forever. Enough of the struggling. Enough of the one leg in, one leg out. Enough of living in the shadows. It's time to surrender completely to him. Wherever you are, walk to the front. Within the next 10 seconds and I'll pray for you. The Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I will obey. Please, 10 more seconds. If you need to join them, join them. If you are making a decision, a fresh decision for Jesus, or you are rededicating your life again, enough of the games, enough of the hide and seek, enough of being one person in the secret and another in the open, and you truly want to surrender to Him, please join them in the front within the next six seconds. Jesus. Now everybody in the congregation stretch your hands towards them and pray. It's such a holy atmosphere. I feel a strong, a strong atmosphere of the presence of the Lord here now. Stretch your hands and just pray for them. Those of you in front, repeat this prayer after me and mean it from your heart if you need to join them please join them now while you can mean this prayer from your heart say after me say Lord Jesus I come to you today I acknowledge my sin and I acknowledge that you died and rose again that I will be saved Therefore, I ask that you forgive my sins. 
I accept you as my Lord and Savior and I declare that I am born again I receive eternal life the God kind of life in Jesus name Father seal these ones with your spirit and I declare that their lives will never remain the same from today you are going forward ever and backward never from today I counsel rising and falling spiritually from today by the strength of the Holy Ghost you will rise continually may you love the Lord sincerely and from a deep heart and I declare that you possess the victory over sin over Satan in Jesus name Amen God bless you please celebrate God for them